Okay, so today I'm going to be diving right into the Sword and Shield Greatsword builds that I have. When I say builds, it's the same gear, but different skill builds. Starting out with the gear, I have the Blade of Resistance, but your end goal is going to be the Carnix that you get from the dungeon, which is mainly because you get a lot of health, a lot of strength. It's a super nice thing to have. That'll top out at, I think, 10 strength, if I remember right, and about 16 or 1800 health. Traits you're going to want on pretty much all your gear is going to be two endurance. My personal choices are melee and ranged, as well as max health, wherever you can get it. Greatsword, this is what I have right now, but what you're going to want is either Duke Magnus, both are really good choices. Uh, the Provoking Warblade, that is going to bump up to, I think, 1800 health and I think seven or eight strength at max, which is super nice, but it does have less damage. But it is good for your traditional PvE tanks. For PvP, I would personally go with the Fury, which it does have dex, but you get the extra heavy hit chance. And you would go for hit chance, crit, and heavy on the Fury if you're going for the more PvE or just pure tank. With the Provoking, I would go with max health, heavy hit chance, and regular hit chance. Hopping over to the rest of the gear, I'd run two-piece Field General and two-piece Shock Commander. Now the helmet drops from... Give me a sec. Uh, from Chernabog. So it is going to be RNG for that and take a bit. The chest piece you can get for the Field General from, I believe it's Death's Abyss as well. Yeah, Death's Abyss. But my personal choices for it is going, is going to be the boots and the helmet for Field General and gloves and chest Shock Commander. Now, we on Global don't have Silius Abyss uh, Floor 5 and 6 yet but that is where you're going to get your Shock Commander chest piece, which is a super solid piece. It has strength, damage reduction, you can get max life rolled onto it as a trait, and then of course your two Endurances. Endurance as a stat is super nice. I like it compared more than Evasion because Endurance, someone's gonna be hitting for less, they eventually can't crit you if your Endurance is higher, and depending on how much higher, they're going to be forced to roll their attacks at the minimum damage called glancing blows. Whereas evasion, it is very much an all or nothing stat. You need to stack a bunch of it and have more, which realistically with great swords and daggers and stuff, daggers will help with the evasion, but you're not using that in this build. And great swords, other people using them, they're going to have extra hit because of a passive that I will show you in a moment here. I'm currently using Supreme Devotion for the cloak, which is nice, but your best in slot is definitely going to be Forsaken Embrace for the health and damage reduction. That is from uh, Juno Boat, which we don't I don't think we have Juna Boat on Global yet. I'll have to double check, but it will be out soon. Shock Commander Gauntlets are from Dungeons. That's the chess piece from the campaign. Pants are kind of a flex slot because your Field General and your Shock Commander pants, they come from Tevent. It's going to be a while before we get that. And even then, it's going to be really hard to get your hands on them. So just find one that gives you health or strength, whatever stat you're looking to get. All of those are good. I have the Bracers of the Primal King. This is from the Cave of Destruction. We got the Perception Bonus, Bonus Damage, Health and Skill Damage Resistance as the traits. Pretty much all of your stuff is going to be geared towards extra strength, extra stats, max health, uh, endurance, your skill damage boosts and resistances, and your max health. So 
Alabaster that was from getting 40 of the Abyss tokens for the weekly contracts. Amber Dimensional I bought off the market, but you get that by getting 10 of each of the dungeon tokens by essentially just running each of the dungeons about three times to get 12. You get four per chest. Now, that's it for gear. And stat tri distribution, you're looking at about 30 perception, 30 dex, dump the rest into strength. It's going to change when you get more geared, but it's a good relative basis to go off of. Our PvE, we, I'll show the skill specializations, but a lot of it is essentially cooldowns um, some extra health on Da Vinci's extra aggro de generation on both our great sword and uh, sword and shield skills. Piercing strike is shield strike. Just going over any of the ones with where it changes the name of the actual skill. Blood devotion is devoted sanctuary. Now, PVE rotation, you essentially got all your damage. You got a little bit of aggro generation with Will Breaker. Uh, another taunt is Piercing Strike, which is the Shield Strike. And you're usually good to tank with this setup. So we got Counter Barrier for extra tankiness with the Shield Block Chance, which works together with Aegis Shield. Extra defense per Shield Block Chance. We have our chains to pull enemies off our teammates for PvE, Provoking Roar, an AoE taunt. Style War Bastion, extra damage reduction for teammates as well as yourself. Up here we got our Cruel Smite. That is Valiant Brawl here, the attack three times. Uh, we got our Stunning Blow. Again, it's nice to be able to stun enemies. One, if they do get stunned, you deal extra damage with Death Blow and Guillotine Blade. But it also stops them from attacking your teammates. Da Vinci's Courage for the AoE buff, for health and health regen, and Willbreaker for the extra taunt and the weaken. We got the Devoted Sanctuary that you eat your teammate's damage, or a chunk of it rather. And then of course damage on Guillotine Blade. Uh, Masteries, I went with the bottom for the extra attack speed, crit chance, all of that good stuff. But the middle one and the top one are all good for your PvE. Um, went with the bottom one specifically, though, because it works for both PvP and PvE pretty well. Sword Masteries is top all the way. You got damage reduction, max health, weakened chance, evasion, which is less of an important thing since we're going endurance, and buff duration. All good stuff. Now, going over to the PvP setup for the Greatsword, again, it's the same gear and same recommended gear. But we have cruel for these specializations. This is the great sword ones. This is your sword and shield ones. And how your rotation is going to go is you have cruel smite, which is Valiant Brawl. That will soften up your enemies. You have your precision dash. This is a big one. You need this bind. So you're gonna dash into someone they're going to get bound. You're going to hit them with Ascending Slash, which is going to knock them prone, or rather 80% chance to, since they're bound. Then you're going to hit them with Guillotine Blade, extra damage when they are prone, the 8 19% versus 630, sizable. We got the Stunning Blow for the Stun Chance. The Devastating Smash, again, for a stun, so that you de definitely have a second stun to go off of, because Death Bloke does 30% extra to stun targets. Piercing Strike, which is your Shield Strike, it's a good AoE. Hits hard and works good with Counter Barrier. You got your Chain Hook, Counter Barrier, and Da Vinci's. For passives, we got extra health, just in general, and regen. We have extra hit chance per health. So that's the one I was talking about with the great sword. So per, let's see, 0.425 per 100 max health. That is 1740 multiplied. 
And this is just with my build. When you get fully built, it's going to be even more. Um, 1740 times 0.425. So that's a free 700. Uh, let's see. Oh no, 1.62. So you're getting a solid amount of hit chance off. But if we even just go to the sheet, we have 656 right there. If we were to take this skill off it drops to 375 so that's going to be the difference between you hitting someone or not we've got the extra heavy attack chance against stun targets and crit chance super nice we have taking damage it has a chance to increase your defenses up to three times that's solid Aegis Shield is the one that you get more uh, damage reduction per and defense per block chance. That's why Counter Barrier is such a nice skill. We've got CC resistance, and we've got essentially us being tankier the more stuff that's around us. And morale boost, colliding, drops your cooldowns. All of this works together so that you can drop people pretty easily. And that, I believe, is the end of the build. But if there's anything that I missed out on, feel free to comment. I am just sending this out because I'm going to be switching hard to Sword and Shield and Wand and wanted to get this out before I ate up my great sword into my wand when I get it. And have yourselves a wonderful day. Hope you enjoyed.